Hey guys, Henning Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to take a look at C spheres in ZBrush. Before we do that, make sure to subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell as well. C spheres is really one of my favorite features in, in ZBrush when it comes to concepting up different things. If you're doing creature concepting or if you want to block out a human, whatever it might be, it's really one of the most powerful tools. It's, it's a very old feature, so a lot of people overlook it because you're going into the more fancier toys like uh, uh, Sculptors Pro and Dynamesh, but it, there are definitely use cases for C-Sphere still in ZBrush today. There's also arbitrary features like, that's how we used to retopologize in ZBrush, <laughs> we used C-Spheres. Uh, yeah, there's just a lot of weird stuff with it, but C-Spheres is a really, really powerful tool. We can find C-Spheres under Tool and we have CSphere here. Now we are using the new ZBrush uh, 2020, which doesn't really add anything new to ZBrush, but there are some other features as well you might see. So when you have it, when you've enabled here, you can see that we have this nice little red sphere and this looks weird. And it is quite different from other features in ZBrush. Unlike the other features which are using pure polygons, this one and, and, and brushes, we will be using the draw mode, move, scale, and rotate up here to actually get something out here. So if we enable symmetry now, now we can see that we have uh, we have symmetry. Just hit the X key for that. Also, a new feature in Zebra 2020 is we have the head over here, so we can actually see which way we're facing. This is basically impossible to do beforehand, so now we know we're facing forward. So let's just add a little creature here. We are going to be using the draw mode, and then we can just start to just draw it out like so. Now, what we have here is the start of a base. We can now use the move brush to to move this around. Let's say these are hips. Then we can use the draw brush again, hit the Q key, and then we can just move this out like so, or drag it out, and then we can move it down. Then we can add another C-sphere, and we can drag it out like so, and then we can drag it down. And now you can see we can kind of get some legs going around. We can use the move brush now, just hit the W key, and we can just start to move this around like so. And you can just quickly see how incredibly fast it is to actually get something out. If we hold down um, uh, the shift key while clicking on, or while dragging out in the draw mode here, we get a Caesar, which is exactly the same size for this. We can also hold down the control key, and this is going to move it out like so as well. Now we can just move it like this. A tip is that when you're doing this, you should have the, bro the draw size set to the lowest thing you can. Uh, right now, it's not a huge problem, but you might end up in, in situations where you have something like this with a giant brush size, and now it moves everything. So I prefer to set my, my draw size all the way down to one, because now I'm only controlling a single C-sphere with no problem roll. You can also insert a C-sphere in the middle of the chain as well. So uh, if you want to make this more of a creature foot, you can do that. You can add go into the draw mode, you can click in the middle, and that just adds it here. Then we can go to the move brush, and we can just move it down like so, so you can get something more of a creature foot. We can um, go up here, and um, we can add a body to it, and just draw it out. So you can see how quickly you can actually get something going with this. It's super fast to get something rolling. You click in the middle to add another C-sphere like this, so you can get some posture, Kind of looks like one of those Boston Dynamic robots. <laughs> yeah, the exactly. <laughs> the ones which will turn into super soldiers and <laughs> yes. destroy our modern society. <laughs> yeah, so C spheres are incredibly useful for especially concepting up your base. Just because, I mean, if you were to drag this out with just regular spheres and, and then dynamish them together or something like that, you have to do quite a lot of stretching and, and fitting. And that's, it's also a way to do it. But with C spheres, it's just, I don't know, it's just pretty intuitive because you create this armature for your character that you can then really easily pose and you don't have to worry about the transpose lines or transforming things around because you just, you know, you just have the standard tools. It's also really cool because once we built this armature, we can also m manipulate it a lot. If we were to go into just make sure the move brush is selected, W key, now we can just go between the C spheres. You see there is like a, almost like a bone between them. If you're familiar with Maya rigging or any other rigging, and we can just drag them here. And now you can just see that it kind of poses the entire thing in its weird fashion. <laughs> so if you want to change the character, you might make him really slouch over like this. You can easily do this like so. You can make him <laughs> shrug like this. It takes them a little bit of time to get used to this, but it's a really cool way of, of changing the design. If you want to move it up like this, you can really quickly do this. And you, you just create a whole new character like right away from this. If you don't want to 
pose that like this, you just want to move everything up. Now we just hold on the Alt key while going in the middle here. You see the bone here and just hold on the Alt key. Now you can just stretch him to infinity him beyond like this. You can do the same when it comes to scaling as well, where we can scale up the entire thing if we if we hover over the, the bones in the middle here, and then we can just scale up and down. Or we can hold on the Alt key while doing it, and this is going to scale them up just each local sphere in this chain. So now we can just make it a lot thicker, just to design it up. You can do the same with rotation as well, where now you can just rotate them around. Unlike the moving, this doesn't actually do a lot of uh, crazy stuff. This just rotate, rotates it around. Or you can hold down the Alt key on the single sphere, and now you can just see that we're actually rotating all of this. So now you're done with your beautiful character. It's well, amazing. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, I worked very hard on it. Let's add a little tail to him as well, just to make sure he, he fits his design now. So what do we actually do now with the design? Like now clearly we can't use this for anything. Well, we have to turn him into polygons. And we do this if you go to tool and then all the way in the bottom, we have adaptive skin. So we hit preview. Now you can see what happens. So we turn them into half a million polygons and um, we get these, uh, it looks like it's been dynamesh now essentially. But what we can do, we can set the dynamesh resolution all the way down and just re-enable preview. And now you can see that we actually have polygons with this. And it's not that the topology here is super tight or anything like that. Like clearly there are issues, massive, massive issues like this. What it means though is that we actually have a very nice and straight topology for these areas. Like you can see here, the, the body here is, is pretty damn solid for what it is. Clearly it's not final topology, but it's a very workable topology. This is a big difference between using Dynamesh, Sculptless Pro, whatever, is that we actually get workable topology, which we can start sculpting on right away when it comes to, um, comes to masking stuff out, posting it out, whatever it might be. Yeah, and importantly, we also, you know, we have some volumes. Obviously, you know, we still need to go in and actually create the, the proper volumes. This is more just like a sketch of what the character can look like. And then, but the cool thing is once you have the adaptive skin, turn that into geometry and then you can just start sculpting on it. The hotkey for adaptive skin is also the A key. So you can just quickly go between these. You can also go in and change the density of it. So if you want an even lower base than this, you can go in and just change the density here. Now, if you want this to be um, actual polygons, we just click make adaptive skin. And now you can see up here that we have a skin C-sphere one. So if you click A now, nothing is gonna happen. And um, that's because now it's converted to polygons. So now you can start to subdivide it up and you can start to, to sculpt as much as you want to on this. So this is really one of my favorite ways of coming up with interesting designs when it comes to, uh, to creatures and characters, because it's so quick to do it. And then of course you can combine this with Sculptors Pro and Dynamesh later on, right? You know, if you wanna, if you wanna go crazy with this kind of <laughs> stuff, uh, this is disable subdivisions. So if you wanna go crazy with this, you can totally do this with Sculptors Pro as well. So there is no limitation to, to what you can use this for. So the way I often do this is I start off with C-spheres and then I'm converting this to Dynamesh and Sculptors Pro and then maybe see or mesh it later on to have a nice working base. But yeah, that's, uh, that's C-spheres for you. Really one of the most powerful tools in uh, CBrush for concepting. Just to sum it up here, we have, um, we go under tool, C-sphere, click the C-sphere. Then we can use the draw brush to draw the things out. We can use the move brush to actually move them into place. And um, we can use scale and rotate to change the size and rotation of it as well. You can also use them for posing your characters as well. We have a whole different tutorial tutorial on that on our channel as well. This is a really powerful way of posing because now you can just drag out a C-sphere rig like this inside your character and now you can pose the character like this. Super powerful way of doing it because you don't really have to deal with any rigs or anything like that. Now keep in mind that it sucks, but it's, uh, it's a pretty good alternative to not having to rig something. Like it's very fiddly, but most of the time, especially if you have something with a lot of sub tools, like you're making a complex character, it's, I find it's probably the easiest way to pose something, especially in ZBrush, but it's not always super intuitive, but it does, you know, it, it does the job. So check out our other tutorial on exactly that. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any other requests for CBrush features we should look into, it doesn't have to be anything new or flashy. It can be a feature like C-Sphere, which you just didn't understand. And even though it's been there since like the early 90s, or late 90s. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just let us know in the comments. If you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to like and subscribe and click on the notification bell as well to get notified every single time we put out a new video.
So if you're looking for training or high quality assets, make sure to stop by the Flip Normals Marketplace. And if you're interested in supporting us by buying our merchandise, you can check that out in the description below.